We are going to study this artist, okay? Other than Amy, does anybody know who this person is? Yeah, but I forgot his name. No guesses? Any guesses? Yeah, he has crazy hair, though. He has crazy hair. Anybody watch the Super Bowl? You never watched the Super Bowl for the game or the commercial? He was on the Burger King commercial this year. <laughs> that was him. That was a super weird commercial, which fits his personality pretty well. I just Okay, so it said like eat. What did it say? Eat like Andy or something? Like yeah. the hashtag? Yeah. Yes. So this Andy who? Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. Okay, so this is Andy Warhol. So we've talked a little bit about Andy Warhol, like in part one, with like screen printing, and we've looked at these things. Um, the biggest takeaway that we're going to talk about are how he applied color. Does anybody know what he did to apply color, to, to apply his medium in general? What was his most famous was medium? Was it printmaking? And yeah, but specifically... He printed regular and he did screen printing. Screen printing, okay. So screen printing, printmaking, all kind of all in the printing kind of form. Um, he did screen printing and he did what's called photographic screen printing, meaning he used images of famous people and then he would do various styles of printmaking. And I'm actually going to show you something that was one of his later works and is probably one of his more modern pieces. But this, where have you seen this before? We can't. Sometimes it makes it darker. Taylor, do you want to I have no idea. play around with the switches? So you just get the one that closes this off. There you go. I've seen that one, but like Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, you've seen this one with Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, where have you seen this specific thing? What is that one thing you stare at for like 14 hours a day? Yeah, I'll your phone. Your phone. Sometimes it's like a filter on your phone. Okay. Um, so he was famous for doing this concept, but as Amber said, in the Marilyn Monroe scheme. So how did he pick what he painted? He usually picked like, it just depended. But he, his idea was ordinary things done in an extraordinary way. That's what we would say about Andy Warhol. So like we look at this banana, it's kind of like an ordinary thing, right? But he wanted to create a piece of artwork over a banana, so he did it like this, like just kind of crazy. But why did he create it like this? What does screen printing allow you to do or maybe take away options of? What did we say with screen printing? You can only apply one color, one color at a time. Okay, so that means it's going to separate your values for you, which is what you are going to do. Um, what you have seen before is this Marilyn Monroe. Now, Marilyn Monroe is anything but ordinary. Why would this be considered part of his ordinary things done in an extraordinary way? Because she's not ordinary. What, what is, was Marilyn Monroe famous for? What did she do? What was her career? She was like a model, actress. Really, really, really popular and really pretty risque for the time frame she lived in, okay? So we're talking like 1950s is, 1950s, 60s, 70s is when pop art kind of came to America, okay? And then, so what was her biggest thing, though? Other than she was really famous because she was in the news all the time. That's what made her ordinary because everybody had TVs then, everybody got the news, so they heard of Marilyn Monroe a lot. That's what made her ordinary. Well, what did she kind of do that was like kind of scandalous? Um, she, left with the she was kind of having an affair with the president at the time, JFK. Okay, so there's a lot of like information out there about JFK and Marilyn Monroe. And so Andy Warhol decided, you know what, I'm going to take this kind of scandal and make this like part of his artwork. So he did very, very famous people. This is another person actually. Who is that? It says under there. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger, okay. So he went from kind of taking these concepts of Marilyn Monroe where they looked very real and just kind of reproduced the, the picture over and over and over again to where he would decide, okay, I'm going to do like clumps of color and stuff here and there, okay? So we're going to kind of take his two ideas and we are going to create an image from the most famous person you know. Who is that? Yourself. Yourself. Every artist. Yay. Almost, I would say nearly almost every artist believed that they they should do a self-portrait, okay? There's Andy Warhol. There's one of his self-portraits. He had many, okay? Uh, Vincent Van Gogh. You guys have heard of Vincent Van Gogh. Very famous. He did a, a self-portrait every single year on his birthday. He thought it's good for me to document what I look like and document my time and all that stuff. So you are going to do a painting of yourself. But in order to kind of make it crazy and fun... What the picturing, what the picture process is and does, is I am going to. This, these are not people you know, by the way. I am going to project 
color onto you. And then you are going to, we are going to then take your picture. Look, look at these people down here. I am going to separate the values on my computer. You're welcome. I'm going to make sure that you don't have to do that because that would take five years probably. But I want you to be part of that process, that decision making. So after I take like 10 pictures, I'll upload them and I'll call you over and you'll kind of help me look at that. Um, and then we are going to draw yourself and paint yourself. Okay, so for example, this is how this starts out. Uh, these are, this is a random picture like during homecoming week one time. Okay, so here is random people playing a game. This is how the picture looks out, this is normal color. When I put it into Photoshop, I can break apart your values like that. Okay, so do you see the, the difference? We, we're gonna lose a little bit of detail, but we're also going to gain a few like things in terms of like it's gonna separate your colors for you. Uh, sometimes the computer grabs values that are most similar to each other, right, in order to get like highlights and dark. But still, you can tell that the form in this person, even though it's simplistic. So when you think about yourself, I want you to like know that that's like coming, okay? So who has done this project? Well, a lot of people have. We are going to grid this. I recently got this poster from the Creative Center in Omaha, and this is like a student piece of artwork that came from there. So you can see, this is really dark, sorry. You can see kind of how they chose a color scheme. They almost did like a monochromatic color scheme. Um, who has done this before though? Let's look at some examples. Here's some, an older example. Anybody know who this is? Chloe Grody. Chloe Grody. She graduated last year. Okay. Um, you can see how, oops, sorry, jumping ahead. So you can be as silly or goofy or serious or whatever as you want. Okay. <laughs> Things that make this obviously a little more complicated are anytime you can show teeth. All right. Anytime, if you're straight on, that is, I'm just giving fair warnings. Um, if you're straight on, it is a little bit more simpler than if you're slightly turned because your proportions get a little bit off. But again, it's totally up to you. I'm going to show you a lot of very successful pieces. Um, here is this one, Katie Bowden. Um, so she just decided to stick her tongue out. You can see she's turned a little bit. So we see a little bit more um, of like her, her chin is not necessarily like right in the center. It's almost like we're curved a little bit this way. Uh, we have Macy Ludwig. She's doing very serious pose, pondering off into the distance. Okay. Um, but lots of really good color. We can still tell who these people are. Now, my other examples are actually examples of people from last semester. Okay. You're going to recognize some of them. Okay. Here we have Alexa. this one. Alexa. This is Alexa. Okay. I will play around with the images. Um, and actually, what we do is I get your opinion when I'm taking pictures. Like, I have someone that's holding a strong light because as you can see on the one on the screen too, it works best if we have a light source and then that way we can have some mediums and dark tones. So that's what we shoot for. So we have Alexa here um, and we'll play around with whatever color looks great with your skin. Okay, I promise. And then we have Angela. Angela, have you seen Angela in the back? Hi Angela. So Angela decided to be a little goofy. She, even, apron. she even kept her apron on. Okay. Anytime you put hands in, again, I'm just going to warn you, it makes things more complicated. It doesn't mean it's not worth it. It's still awesome, but it does make some complications. Um, we, you're going to have some, if you look at the difference between Alexa and Angela, we'll talk about background. Basically, you split the background up a little bit based upon what the picture gives you, but you have the ability to simplify it a little bit or change it a little bit. So Angela went with kind of the colors that were there, but we, we, she changed it to kind of look like this almost lava lampish or something, right? So you have the ability to change your background a little bit. Um, but I would suggest kind of sticking with the colors it gives you because a lot of times it works with your skin tone. Um, here we have Tempe. So I don't want to stick in her tongue out. What's up with that guy, Joe? Maybe Langle. This one. Okay. So a lot of different ways to go about this. Who do you know, Bailey? Brittany. <laughs> Be nice. Okay. Um, all these are really good. Okay, I always tell people too, if they want to go off their picture a little bit, like the colors a tiny bit, it's okay. Just make sure you keep your values the same, meaning like your highlights, your mediums, your dark. They should all be highlight, medium, dark. It looks real weird when people mix those up. So Brittany's, if I showed you the picture of what it looks like on the, the printer, like she color maps everything exactly. Okay, this took her probably longer than necessary, but also came out really, really good. And then we also have Reagan's from last semester, okay. The key component with all of these is, one, they were drawn well. They took their time. Two, they are painted very, very well. Their edges are perfect almost. Their colors are really, the coverage is very good, right? 
What does all that mean? It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while, and you're not allowed to get all mad at me, okay? But I promise it's worth it. I actually was like, you know what? I think this is the year I'm going to stop doing this project. And I was talking to a couple people, and they're like, you, you can't. Like, this is one of our, this is one of the best projects at the art show. So, no pressure, right? <laughs> but. Does it have to be a picture like you take, or do you? Yes. Because I have to project the images, I've tried overlaying, in, like, like, images later, and it just doesn't work as well, like, colors and stuff. So, yeah. Here's the deal, yo. I'm going to give you guys canvases. We're going to grid the canvases. You are going to grid the canvases every two inches, and I'll print the picture to be able to be gridded to that. So some of you, I will start photographing right away, and others of you, you have options. If you are like those back three tables, we'll say, you could get your apples out and work on those a little bit if you're still finishing that up, or you can start gridding your canvas, and then like when these two tables are done, I'll like steal your table, and I'll just kind of until I get everybody's picture taken. We will do our best to get everyone's picture taken today. Okay, but that means that like when it's your time to come, you gotta drop everything you're doing and come up here. Okay, go next. <laughs>